Thanks everybody for turning up. Joel Ben here, business analyst in the services team. Uh, the Get XRIF API again, it's another one which pulls information out of the registry. Um, it's very similar to the Get RIF CS API, but it differs in the way that it pulls back extended RIF. And the extended RIF is basically when records are ingested into the registry, we do some transformations and enriching um, to those records to um, for example, when things come in with the ANZ SRC FOR codes, which is the six digit codes, we actually convert them to the string literal and store that in the XRIF. Um, spatial lat longs and things like that coordinates, we actually convert them to a ge geometry that's compatible with Google Maps. Um, and the connections themselves, when we get a key um, in the RIF CS and the relationship, we actually go and resolve that to a person's name. Um, I think the status as well, mm -hmm. the title. Um, and also we store obviously information about when the record came in and out of the registry, um, which we can use later on in searches. Um, and this, this information is obviously really useful for other people that don't necessarily completely understand what's in the RIVCS itself. So the data within the RIVCS, um, I mean, if you picked up a piece of RIVCS and you didn't quite know what ANZFOR was, you wouldn't know what that six digit was going to convert to. Um, so the extended RIVCS is, is gonna be useful to some people. So again, just the address, researchdataaustralia.ans.org.au forward slash developers. The web services themselves, um, they're not as pretty because there's no real fancy front end to them. Um, there are little explanation diagrams um, for each, uh, I think nearly all of the, the services that we have, um, just showing sort of how they work. There's obviously the description and the use cases for each of the services, how people might want to implement them and the useful points throughout about them. As you can see here, before you start, the one thing to note about the services themselves is that um, any developer that wants to use them actually has to register for a API key that they pass um, when they call them ser the services. And that's just a way of us knowing and identifying who's actually using the services. Um, you don't have to be uh, a, a user with a log onto the registry. Um, you can just click the link and it'll take you to a publicly accessible page where you can fill out the organization, the contact email and why you want to uh, basically use the, the API key um, and you click register and it will basically right there and then generate you a key um, to pass with the service calls um, and a couple of example uses of uh, working um, service calls um, and that's pretty much all I've got.